are you living like a millionaire? You know, I like to do research over here, but 82% of millionaires don't have this. Stay tuned to Financial Confidence, guys, because we're about to blow your mind. Welcome to Financial Confidence, where we're helping you to make your money, keep your money, and grow your money so you can do the things that you're called to do. That's to build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for the children's children. We appreciate you for listening in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. Call us with your success stories or your questions about money. Leave us a voicemail at 470-236-8282. Or email us at financialconfidence at gmail.com. Get rid of that thinking, thinking today, guys. Get rid of those negative attitudes because your enemy doesn't have to be your greatest enemy. Don't waste that emotional energy. Make the decision that I'm not going to fail. I am not going to fall for that. So today we're uh, in the studio talking about living like a millionaire. Are you living like a millionaire? Stay tuned, guys, because the guiding principle of this show is Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, that's right, guys. Also, pray over those finances so you can do the things that you are called to do. So if you will, bow with me. Lord, help us to value the things in this world that's really valuable. That's our relationship with you, our lives, and our families. Help make us responsible stewards of your financial resources, and let us trust your holy word. Your eternal glory, thy son Jesus, in his name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we're super excited about having this conversation today. Are you living like a millionaire? Some of us, we spin, 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 but I want you to stop, stop, stop. Pause for a moment and think about it. So, you know, I like to do research and I pull some research um, about what we get wrong about closing this racial wealth gap. Okay, guys. And I thought this, this study blew my mind. Yeah, I'm going to tell you about living like a millionaire, but I also want to give you some facts and figures based upon this research. So I have this research report from the Samuel Du Bois Cook Center of Social Equity out of Duke University. And it's entitled, What We Get Wrong About Closing the Wealth Gap. And we've heard the stories about the amount of uh, gap there is and the fact that it will take 200 years for the black community to catch up to other communities in regards to the amount of wealth that they're able to ob ob obtain or attain within their um, communities. But it, this goes on to tell that the key findings of the research, and this we're going to step on some toes. There are some myths that we need to bust that are going to be um, burst. Um, so I would definitely love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? What do you think? Do you agree with this? Do you disagree with this? Do you kind of sort of? Where are you as far as all of this is concerned? But essentially, what the article says is that wealth begets wealth, right? You have to have money to make money. Essentially, we've heard that before. And we know that we are called, right, to be the lender and not the borrower, right? So what are those things that we can do differently? So some of the, this article basically pulls back a little bit and actually looks at what information is being told to us and whether or not there are misconceptions embedded in that. So some of the key findings from this article I want to share with you is that the median black household has just 10% of the wealth of the median white household, which we know that we've heard that, you know, that fact has been repeated, uh, CNBC, um, here now with Duke University, and other institutions as well that have been, um, completed these types of research studies. Um, we know that constitute 13% of the population here in America, but we hold less than 3% of the wealth. However, the myths that are commonly sold to us, the fact that home ownership, entrepreneurship, educational attainment, the lack of behavior as far as savings, financial literacy, or 
the commitment to buying black or having this renewed focus towards the soft skills or your personal responsibility, what this article essentially is saying is that all of those things that they've offered to us in regards to this racial wealth gap or our ability to, to close it, it does, they don't even come close to accounting for the vastness of the gap. So that this gap is so large, and I, got, I want you to see this, is as if someone just took the, the whole, if you will, just picture someone taking the entire a northern North American continent and removing it from the earth. So now you have this huge hole that is in that space where North America used to be. So now, thinking from that perspective, it also comes goes on to say that we it essentially the exact opposite is true. So what do we mean by that? Um, the myth they're not just wrong, but what they're saying is, um, for example the topic of saving behavior, right? They say that you're not having the right saving handle, you're spending more, you know, the black dollar purchases $1.3 trillion, right? Um, worth of consumer goods. And what essentially it says is that a study that was conducted by the Institute of Assets and Social Policy, and this is the 2013 survey of consumer consumerism, consumer finances. And essentially they found that Whites spend 1.3 times more than Blacks of the same economic background. And in Black families, they tend to be more supportive of prioritizing education um, in those families. So there are some myths out here, or there are some huge gaps that continue to remain in the knowledge that's available to us. So then how do we close that gap? I'm going to tell you about that later. Let's go ahead and go over here and talk about living like a millionaire. So 82% of millionaires don't have this. And this gets back to that point about the consumer spending. 82% um, of millionaires, guys, guess what? They don't have a car payment. You say, oh, man, I thought you were going to tell me something I didn't, you know, something new. But, guys, think about it. The average American today is willing to pay $550, $450 to $550 for a car payment. When the millionaire, 82% of the millionaires don't even have a car payment. Now, it doesn't mean they don't have a nice car, right? And it doesn't mean, you know, that um, they didn't save. They had the saving behavior and put the monies aside. Essentially, that, that's what it boils down to. They're paying cash for those cars. Why? Because a car is what we call a depreciating asset. And when you have a depreciating asset, you've heard this before on the show, you drive the car off the lot, what? It goes down in value. So by waiting and purchasing a used car three to four years, most of that depreciation is gone. And you're getting more bang for your buck. Not only are you getting more bang for your buck, but also you don't have to pay those interest, right? The additional monies on actually owning the car if you're able to save up and purchase that car, you know, with cash. So just want you to start thinking about this. Now, what are some of the things that you can do differently? And I understand, well, you're like, man, I'm in the middle of it. I have a car payment now. That's fine. You have to continue from where you are. Start from where you are today to change your thinking towards tomorrow. The challenge for many of us is that we are our mindset, right? The, mind, the mindset to save up and pay cash. So as soon as you get this car paid off, there's that extra money, that monthly payment that's now available that you could be putting aside. So it's about getting focused, getting focused, reallocating those dollars, if you will, right? Big word, <laughs> reallocating those dollars so that you can, you know, now that you've paid it off, put those dollars aside so that you don't go backwards moving forward, <laughs> right? So that you don't go backwards, so that you don't repeat those same steps that you've done in the past, essentially is what we're talking about in moving forward in our finances, guys. It's your decision. You just have to take charge. What decision are you going to make today? Are you deciding that I am going to 
you know, take some of those habits because success leaves clues. Am I going to get rid of this thinking, thinking that I currently have? Because it's not about the Joneses. And at the end of the day, guess what, guys? You can't take it with you, right? A funeral home doesn't roll up with a whole entire moving van to take to the grave with you. See, you leave all of these things behind for someone else to enjoy. It's, multi, it's ultimately about us thinking better about the dollars that we do have coming in and how do we now pull those dollars so that we can do things differently, so that we can now build generational wealth and truly leave an inheritance for our children's children. And one of the things that I want to offer to you, one of the things as you're thinking through, uh, how, as you're getting focused and trying to figure this thing out for you and your family, one of the number one things that I have found most beneficial is getting in with an investment group, right? Getting in with a group of people of a like mind who are now going to be able to pull your dollars. So maybe you don't have all the dollars alone, but with a group of people, maybe that's a group of 20 people, 30 people, 50 people, it doesn't matter. Getting together with a group of people, pulling your dollars, now going out there and investing, right, differently, saved up that money, you're investing it differently, and now collectively as a group, your wealth now begets more wealth. See, if we are truly going to change the game, we have to change our mindset around our dollars and taking those risks so that we can invest. That's how you become the lender and not the borrower. That's how we move into living into the abundance. That's how you transition from just making those car payments to, right, now having a completely different mindset. No, being a millionaire is not what it's all about. However, <laughs> having the dollars does help to make life a little bit easier. Now, you can take care of some of those causes that you want to help. Do you want to help the homeless? Do you want to feed the homeless? Do you want to build shelters for the homeless? What about the little children? The little children are the most helpless of us all. So how do we now pull our dollars so that we can now benefit the causes that we want to help. So guys, ultimately, that's what this conversation is about here at Financial Confidence. We truly appreciate you and thank you for joining in for this episode of Financial Confidence. If this information has been invaluable for you, make sure you go over and check us out at wytv7.org. Also, call us with your success stories or any questions you have about money. Leave us a message at 470-236-8282. Again, that number is 470-236-8282. Almost forgot my own number. And guys, leave us, send us an email as well, financialconfidence at gmail.com. That's financialconfidence at gmail.com. Get rid of that thinking, thinking, change those negative attitudes. Don't let the inner me be your greatest inner me. Now you go out there, guys, and make your money, keep your money, and grow your money so you can do those things that you're called to do. That's to build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for your children's children. We thank you for tuning in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. I'm Lynn Demons. That's Demons, no demons here. D-E-M-M-O-N-S. Go follow us, like us over on social media at Demo Speak. Also, don't forget to share this broadcast out with your family. You have options and opportunities. Check out all the previous broadcasts. Share them out with friends and family. Like us, send us your comments via email or voicemail. We appreciate you so much over here at Financial Confidence and WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network.
Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can today. To learn more about this important relationship or to even request prayer, contact us at wytv7.org. There are no prerequisites or requests for joining. You, all you have to do is simply believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and he was buried and raised from the dead. If you need forgiveness, simply ask and it's yours for the taking. Once you've done that, congratulations, you are now a member of the body of Christ. Now, attend a Bible-believing church, study his word, and practice it daily. Congratulations and welcome to the kingdom of God.